Good morning, welcome to a service from his own prayer book for the 13th of September from St. Jude's Anglican Church, Avondale. If you're able to follow from our newsletter, please do so. If you don't have the newsletter but have access to a new song prayer book, we're following the service from page 404, so it's with reserved sacrament. <clears throat> our opening hymn, which we will recite, is given in our newsletter. It's All Creatures of Our God, the King, and it's number, number 172 of Hymns Ancient and Modern. We will omit the star verses. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, O oh, praise him, O oh, praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along, O oh, praise him, Alleluia. Thou rising morn, in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice, O oh, praise him, O oh, praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou flowing water, pure and clear, make music for the Lord to hear. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. Thou fire so masterful and bright, that giveth man both, both warmth and light. O oh, praise him, O oh, praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And all ye men of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. O oh, sing ye, Alleluia. Ye who long pain and sorrow bear, praise God, and on him cast your care. O oh, praise him, O oh, praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all things, <coughs> all things their creator bless and worship him in humbleness. O oh, praise him, Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son. And praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. <coughs> we cleanse the thoughts of our hearts for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hear the teaching of Christ, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Hear God's word to all who turn to Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. <coughs> Jesus said, There is joy among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiving. 
in silence and call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. The peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The word of Christ dwell in us richly. The sentence of the day, which you will find in the newsletter. Satisfy us in the morning, O Lord, with your constant love. Teach us to know how few are our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And the collect of the day. <clears throat> God of infinite mercy, grant that we who know your pity may rejoice in your forgiveness and gladly forgive others for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, beginning at the 19th verse. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. <coughs> then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. All the morning watch, the Lord in a pillar of fire, at the morning watch, the Lord in a pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and drew the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. For the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptian dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work of the Lord that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The appointed psalm for this morning is number 114. <clears throat> when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from among the people, among the people of an alien tongue, Judah became the Lord's temple, and Israel became God's kingdom. The sea fled at the sight of it, and Jordan turned back in its course.
horse. The mountains skipped like rams, and the hills like yearling sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water, and the flintstone into a gushing spring. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second lesson this morning <coughs> is from the letter of St. Paul to the, Egypt, to the Romans. Chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honour of the Lord. And also those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. <clears throat> you pass judgment on your brother or sister, or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, If I live, says the Lord, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow down to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn, which we will recite, <coughs> is from the New Harvest book, number 22. It is in your newsletter. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and bless his holy name. Forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. <clears throat> the Lord is full of mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul, slow to anger and full of love. And he will not always chide nor keep his anger for all time. As far as the heavens are high above, bless the Lord, O my soul. So great is his steadfast love. As far as east is from west, so he removes our sin from us. His steadfast love is for all time. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, upon all those who fear him, his ministers, that do his will in all the places of this world. <clears throat> Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at chapter 18, 21st verse. Praise and glory to God. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, 
but I tell you, 77 times. <coughs> For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his life, wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, <clears throat> as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. What does it really mean to forgive someone? We usually learn about forgiveness, the practice of forgiveness from an early age, where we're taught to say, I'm sorry, and hopefully you will receive a response, it's okay, I forgive you. When something happens, it hurts another person. But as we get older, it becomes a little more complicated. There's a little bit more to it than taking someone else's toy away in the sandbox, or bumping into someone else in the shop. The truth is that life sometimes brings hurt, not just in general, but in specific, tangible ways that can cause real harm emotionally, mentally, and even physically. And when, <coughs> and when someone we hurt, or someone we love, is injured. Forgiveness is often the last thing by way of our response. True, we hear countless instructions to forgive, but when it comes down to the practice of actually forgiving, it may be very difficult. It is indeed very difficult. It's easy with small things, much less so with hard things. So the essence of the, of the question that Peter is asking Jesus at the onset of today's gospel is basically, how do we forgive? It's not just a question of the number of times, but the degree of the wrong and the degree of the forgiveness. Peter's suggestion of seven times is no accident. It's a... Um, significant number. It's one of those numbers that is often cited as a signifier of what is complete or perfect. And Peter, not surprisingly, wants to be right in his practice. He wants to do things correctly. He wants to aim for perfection. He's not asking what is the minimum number of times, what is the minimum requirement, but rather what do I need to achieve perfection. Jesus' reply, of course, also numerically significant, 
70 times 7. It's not just maths to get him to the number 490. It's response that's basically saying <coughs> perfection beyond perfection. In other words, there is no limit to forgiveness. No limit. That doesn't make it easier. No wonder we have such a time, such a hard time, forgiving. But there is hope. Jesus indicates that forgiveness is not so much about a checklist, but rather ongoing discipleship. Put another way, forgiveness must be a way of life. As we forgive others, so we hope to be forgiven. And just as Peter and Jesus use big numbers in their exchange, so in his parable Jesus introduced characters with larger than life debts and responses. 10,000 talents. <clears throat> talents is not a currency as such. It's a, a measure of weight. But it's used in biblical times as the equivalent of 100 denarii. The denarii was a standard Roman silver coin. And there's a few um, comparisons that we can make here, although it's, it's fraught with difficulty comparing the value of a currency, particularly one uh, 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> but essentially, as a, by way of comparison, in the time of Augustus, which was just a, little, a little bit later, uh, the lowest rank of centurion, so the, uh, the under officers, as it were, of the Roman legion, received pay of 3,750 denarii per year, and the highest rank of centurion, 15,000 denarii. So it's pr it probably means that the fellow servant's debt of 100 denarii was worth about $1,000 in today's terms. Just a benchmark figure, we can't be sure, but approximately $1,000. Not a huge amount of money, but not a small amount of money either. Compare that to the debt owed by the first servant or slave. 10,000 talents. A talent is worth um, 100 denarii. So 10,000 talents is perhaps $10 million. Now, the concept, even if it's, even if it's one tenth of that, the concept of a master forgiving that sort of debt is absurd. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but you're looking at a huge debt to be forgiven. The illustration shows a significant measure of grace. It's the 70 times 7 kind of forgiveness of debt. The contrast, of course, is the man who was forgiven then turns and does something mean, cruel, and unnecessary to a fellow servant. Throws him in jail to compel him to pay what is a relatively small debt. Of course, the king's response <coughs> is then also an exaggerated one. He has him tortured until he can pay the debt. Of course, in those days, such and something like that would perhaps not be that unusual, but nowadays, well, we wouldn't allow it. The exaggeration, of course, is common to parables. What it's saying is, on the one hand, it was somebody who was willing to forgive beyond all imagination, beyond all, beyond all expectation. And another failed to do that. Who would we rather follow? The man who forgave? Or the man who didn't? Forgiveness at its most basic level is a letting go of something. We forgive someone who's wronged us. We are helping them. But we're helping ourselves as well. If we don't forgive, we live on in bitterness. Psychologically, socially, it's harmful. Spiritually, it's harmful. If we forgive others, so too they will learn to forgive 
in their turn. We free ourselves and others by forgiving, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. <coughs> Forgiveness is not just moving on, getting over it. It's not pretending that no wrong was done. It's not pretending that no debt was owed. But it's accepting that there are limits to when we can uncover a debt. And there are occasions when not forgiving causes more harm than forgiving. Forgiveness is naming the offence and declaring that it should not be repeated. It's declaring that the offence will no longer take hold on our lives any longer. Forgiveness proclaims that mercy is what will define us, not vengeance, not lack of forgiving. I think that what Jesus was hoping for in his conversation with Peter and in the parable he gave was that the lives of his disciples, our lives, will be marked by mercy and forbearance. That's the example we find also in the story of Joseph from Genesis, who even in the face of immense pain, his brother's violence and selling him into slavery, would not let pain or violence be what defined him. Forgiveness can certainly open the door to reconciliation and the restoring of relationships. Forgiveness calls attention to our humanness at its most human. It reduces us to our, most, to our most base of instincts and challenges us with the hard work of responding in the way Christ wanted. The lessons taught by Jesus can be daunting, no question of that. They're big, larger than it seems possible at times. But we need to see big images like that to begin to wrap our heads around the nature of God. And such seemingly unreachable examples might be just what we need to begin to take just a little step in the direction of forgiveness calls. One opportunity at a time, then seven, then seventy times seven. May we, little by little, move more into the ways of God's mercy. We now say the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, <coughs> who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. In particular, in this province, we pray for the Archdeaconry of Manukau, the parish all Saints Howard, 
All Saints Selwyn Chapel, Harwich. Whitford Mission Venture of St Thomas Whitford and the Asian Mission History. We pray for the parish of St Peter, Pakarangan, the cooperating parish of St John, Buckland's Beach, the, for the Seasons Grief and Loss Program operating in Howard, South Auckland. And also in Pukekohe, Omihanga, North Shore, and Mount Rascal Sand in the Mangan We pray for the Rasen Coordinator, Claudette Bandicure. In the Diocese of Waikato and Taranaki, we pray for the Bishop, the Most Reverend Philip Richardson. Father, enliven the church for its mission, that we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. We pray for the world. We pray for the Christian world service. The development, justice and aid agency of New Zealand churches, working to meet people's immediate needs of food, water, dignity, justice and emergency relief. We pray for the Anglican Chinese Mission, the Anglican Alliance London, providing emergency relief, development and advocacy. And for the Bible Society of New Zealand, partnering with more than 25 Bible societies worldwide. <clears throat> for Saudi Arabia, we pray for courage for converts who must endure persecution because of their new faith, that seekers and secret believers reached through TV, radio and the internet will find fellowship. For Saudi women of, all, of any and all faiths, who are often the victims of human rights abuses. For King Solomon and members of the royal family. We pray for fruitfulness. Loving Lord, help us be fruitful in our work, to grow initiatives that bring hope to the vulnerable and the downhearted, bringing new life where there is often despair. We may not always see the results of work begun, but we pray that the power of your Holy Spirit will continue to bring to maturity the seeds that are planted. <coughs> Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace, that we, <coughs> that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us the sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community, in particular those of Avondale and adjacent suburbs. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. We remember those who've died and those who mourn. We remember with thanksgiving those who've died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. <coughs> Father, into your hands we commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. We praise you for St Jude and for the Blessed Virgin Mary and for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May their example inspire and encourage us. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. Lord, you've called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming, 
and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The peace of Christ be always with you, and also with you. Brothers and sisters, we are the body of Christ. By one spirit we are baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. We are bound by the love of Christ. <clears throat> we'll say together the offertory hymn, which is in your newsletter, We Cannot Measure. We Cannot Measure how you heal or answer every sufferer's prayer. Yet we believe your grace responds where faith and doubt unite to care. Your hands, though bloodied on the cross, survive to hold and heal and warm, to carry all through death to life and cradle children yet unborn. The pain that will not go away, the guilt that clings from things long past, the fear of what the future holds are present as if meant to last. But present to his love, which changes the hurt we never hope to find. The private agonies inside, the memories that haunt the mind. So some have come who need your help, and some have come to make amends. As hands that shaped and saved the world are present in the touch of friends. <coughs> let, Lord, let your spirit meet us here to mend the body, mind and soul, to disentangle peace from pain and make your broken people whole. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we, <coughs> who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope we've set before us so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Brief notices, <clears throat> because we're still in level 2.5, quasi-lockdown. Mother's Union has been postponed until well, a date to be set after lockdown. Morning prayer is tomorrow for Holy Cross Day, streamed of course, and on Wednesday also service of morning prayer to be streamed. Uh, there will be no young adults group on Wednesday because the lockdown, if we're released from it, doesn't end until midnight Wednesday. And the prayer group on Thursday will be meeting virtually. If we're back to level one, the vestry meeting on Thursday will be in the hall. If we are not back to level one, it will be by Zoom, but we will all know shortly as to what the position is. And mainly music, of course, on Friday is suspended until we're back at level one. Likewise, Bible study on Saturday will only proceed if we're in level one. Hopefully, we will be. God willing, we shall see. Our final hymn is from Ancient and Modern, Hymns Ancient and Modern, number 365. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, which will be in the words will be in your newsletter. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet your tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like us his praise should sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favour to his people in distress. Praise him still the same as ever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, glorious in his faithfulness. Father like, he tends and spares us. Well, our feeble frame he knows. In his hand he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Alleluia, alleluia, widely yet his mercy flows. Angels help us to adore him. You uphold him face to face, you behold him face to face. <coughs> Sun and moon bow down before him, dwellers. <coughs> Dwell us all in time and space. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise us, the God of grace. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. God bless.